Hey parents, you're listening to the Project Parenthood podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Nanika Kaur, clinical psychologist and respectful parenting therapist. Each week I'll introduce you to the same respectful parenting practices that I use to help parents repair and deepen connections with their children. You'll get tips for cultivating more parental self-compassion, more cooperation from your kids, and more joy, peace, and resilience in your relationship with them. In today's episode, I'm talking about encouraging your child's intrinsic motivation to change unhelpful behaviors, meaning changing because it's satisfying for them to do so, not because they'll get a reward or avoid a reprimand. Stick around till the end to hear about three special questions to ask your child that will move them toward making positive changes in their everyday lives. It can be so frustrating when you're convinced that you know the best course of action your child should take. It's hard to see them doing things that aren't in their best interest, or simply things you just don't agree with. You're asking yourself, why aren't they working harder, or planning for the future, or taking more responsibility for themselves? When you learn about a mistake they've made, or a pickle they've gotten themselves into, you get hooked by your, what's called a writing reflex, or the urge to tell your child what to do, give them a solution that you think would work better, or fix them in some way. Because you only have control over your own actions, you can get pretty desperate in your attempts to persuade your child to do what you want them to do. This is usually driven by anxiety, worry, and fear on your end about the riskiness of their actions. Maybe they're in distress and you want their suffering to end because then you will be in less distress. So you argue your position, you debate with them, or you threaten to take away loved items. But instead of taking your wisdom to heart, your child reacts with anger defensiveness, irritation, annoyance, and agitation. You're no closer to getting them to change and your relationship with them becomes strained. You end up feeling helpless because you just can't force your kid to do what you feel is the right thing. You might have tons of ideas about why and what your child should change, but if they don't like those ideas, you're stuck. Usually, the more anxious you are about your child's behavior, the more controlling of them you tend to be. When your child gets the feeling that you judge their point of view as misguided and irrelevant, and you're trying to impose your ideas on them, they close themselves off to you. They feel unseen, unheard, and resistant to change. What if you could engage the part of your child that does want to change, elicit the reasons they might want to change, and strengthen your relationship with your child at the same time? Let's face it, most kids want to be autonomous beings who follow their own path, Motivational interviewing, or MI, skills can help you help your child to take their own path. MI is a way of being with your child, coming alongside them rather than trying to lead or direct them. This way, they don't need to take up their sword and shield in preparation for battle with you and your parental expectations. They can lay down their defenses and think about what they want for themselves, which is the beginning of them making a change. Mind you, this isn't about covert manipulation or somehow secretly getting your child to do what you want. This way of engaging with your child requires a genuine desire to understand their motivations and help them reach the goals they say they have. Your only goal is to better understand their current thinking and see if they might be open to some rethinking. It has to be genuinely okay with you that they make a decision for themselves. It might sound far-fetched, but when you ground yourself in the belief that your child is doing the best they can at any given time, listen carefully, and meet your child exactly where they are, you can have collaborative conversations with them in which you help your child make a positive change in their life that they actually want to make, and help them identify the reasons they want to make that change. So, what is motivational interviewing? Originally developed for use with problem drinkers, and found to be effective for strengthening motivation for change in many different types of people and problems, motivational interviewing, or MI, is a therapeutic and person-centered approach to enhancing a person's motivation to make a change by helping them resolve their ambivalence about changing. Sometimes your child's uncertainty or inability to make a choice is because they want two opposite or conflicting things at the same time or they keep switching between the two. Their conflict is between making changes in their behaviors that will probably be beneficial versus not making that beneficial change because it seems difficult to do, and they're not even entirely sure at this point that it'll work. So what you need to do is create the conditions for change. 
Ideally, you already have a connected relationship with your child, and they generally trust you. But even if that's something you're still working on, it's important to establish a trusting connection from the outset of any change-focused conversation that you initiate with your child. To help draw out their own thoughts and ideas, use the MI principles and skills in the spirit of being collaborative, non-judgmental, and compassionate, rather than confrontational. Have a laser focus on your child's autonomy, their point of view, and their experiences rather than your own. You can build rapport and create a space of open communication using the four principles of MI. Express empathy. When your child has a sense that you're seeing the world through their eyes, they feel seen and heard. Then they're more likely to share their experiences with you deeply and honestly. So, with an attitude of acceptance, think about things as your child thinks about them. Feel things as your child feels them. Share in their experiences. The next principle is supporting self-sufficiency. Believe that your child has the capabilities to make successful change. Your child needs to believe that there's hope for change, that it's possible to make a difficult change. They may doubt their abilities because they were unsuccessful at making this change in the past. So highlight the strengths and skills your child already has and focus on their previous successes. And then, you want to roll with resistance. Resistance happens when your child perceives what you're saying to be a threat to their freedom or autonomy. Avoid being confrontational, and eliciting resistance is less likely. Disrupt arguments and power struggles by de-escalating. If resistance arises, roll with it by not contradicting or challenging them. Lastly, you want to develop discrepancy. When your child realizes there's a mismatch between their current behavior or circumstances and their self-identified values and goals, they tend to experience increased motivation to make important life changes. As you use the four principles, gradually help your child become aware that their current behaviors might lead them away from instead of toward their important goals. So, in the spirit of these principles, you want to try to elicit change talk. During these open and collaborative conversations, you can guide the process toward change talk. These are statements that reveal your child's consideration of, motivation for, or commitment to change. You want to evoke, listen for, and expand on your child's statements or nonverbal communications that indicate they might be considering the possibility of change. The more they talk about change, the more likely they are to change. You can gradually move the process forward and elicit a discussion about change by using MI micro skills that you can remember with the acronym ORS, O A R S. So that O is using open-ended questions. Invite your child to elaborate on their responses and think more deeply about an issue by asking questions that can't be answered with yes or no or other short responses which are the result of closed questions. Help your child explore the reasons for and possibility of change by using open-ended questions to keep the conversation moving forward. Examples include, well, how does this affect you on a day-to-day -day basis? What do you like about online gaming? What do you think you'll do now? The A is for affirmations. Help your child feel that change is possible, even if they weren't successful in the past, by helping them see themselves in a positive light. Make relevant and genuine statements, you really have to mean it or this will sound insincere, about your child's strengths and resources. Reframe their behaviors or concerns as evidence of their positive qualities, always beginning with the word you. Praising their strengths versus I, which is simply a compliment that centers your opinion or experience. Some examples include you're working hard to find other activities outside of online gaming. You're opening up about these things, even though I know they're hard to talk about with me. The R is for reflections. Express your empathy and help your child feel that you understand their perspective by listening attentively and making reflective responses, a crucial and strategic skill in MI.
Mirror back to them what you understand them to be saying and feeling about the issue at hand. However, only reflect the statements that they make that are about the negative aspects of things staying the same and the positive aspects of making change. Offering a reflection in response to the statement, I don't want to spend more time outside. I want to play this game. Could sound like, yeah, it's really hard to cut back on gaming. And lastly, the S is for summaries. When you need to shift attention, direction, wrap up the talk, or point out both sides of your child's ambivalence about change, summaries are helpful. Recap all or part of the conversation to communicate interest and understanding and strategically highlight the important elements of the discussion and omit non-relevant topics. As with any parental change you want to make, you have to practice a new skill on purpose. And practice makes progress. Before you try tackling a weighty issue with your child, try using MI strategies in a lower stakes situation, like resistance to putting their clean and folded laundry away. Start with the following two or three open-ended questions. One, on a scale of one to 10, with one meaning I'm not ready at all and 10 meaning I'm ready to do it right now, how ready are you to put your laundry away or whatever task you're hoping they do? Two, okay, why didn't you pick a lower number? Three, if their answer is one, ask, what can we do to get you to a two? See what you did there? When you ask questions about readiness versus desire, you're implying that the task will get done sometime, and they're less likely to say one. With the second question, if they pick a number higher than one, you're essentially asking them to tell you and hear themselves say out loud why they should put the laundry away. Even if they do say one, and you ask how you could work together to make that a two, your child has to brainstorm solutions that will help them put the laundry away, so you're still getting closer to them actually doing it. Remember to take the role of a consultant, putting the responsibility of choice on your child. Offer support, and don't try to force them to do anything. Ask open-ended questions and listen reflectively, holding up a mirror so that they can see and hear their own thoughts more clearly. If you hear them expressing the desire to make a beneficial change in their current behavior, see if you can guide them toward a plan. Imagine that you're trying to sense your child's inner world, the personal and private meanings they make about their environment and experiences, as if it were your own. But stay mindful of that as-if quality, remembering that you're a separate self with your own perspective. You're just pressing pause on your perspective temporarily. The goal is to take an active interest in seeing the situation through your child's eyes. If you've historically used coercive strategies like punishments and rewards to control your kid's behavior, they may be hesitant to have these kinds of conversations, assuming they'll end up being forced into something whether they like it or not. In that case, you can lead with something like, I don't want to force you to do anything you don't want to do. You're a smart enough kid to make decisions like this, and I want you to make an informed decision. Is it okay if we just talk about it a little bit without anyone forcing you to do anything in particular? This is much more likely to keep your kiddo open to the conversation. When your child is upset or brings you a problem, before you do or say anything, count to 10 in your head. Then start with, what I'm getting is, then mirror back to them what they've said. This gets you some buy-in for the conversation and stops you from launching into advice mode. Then just hang with them in their hard feelings. Create space using empathy and validation, not offering advice unless your child specifically asks for it. While listening reflectively, don't ask more than two questions in a row and have no other goal than a great conversation that strengthens closeness and connection. Always focus your reflections on behavior change, so only reflect back the topic you want them to talk more about, which is the behavior that's a target for change. You want to explore with them how their current behavior fits in with their long-term goals and get used to awkward silences. Your child is processing in that silence, so go slower than you think. You'll notice that as your child struggles to explain their thought process, they hear their thoughts and feelings with more clarity. 
They'll start grasping the complexity of their situation and seeing the gaps in their knowledge or angles they hadn't yet considered. Be patient with yourself. Reflective listening requires lots of practice, and you can practice in your everyday life with anyone, not just your kids. So let me know what you learn. It's intensely difficult to see your child struggling in any way. It's hard not to jump in with fixes and advice. Resist this urge by engaging in some self-validation. It makes sense that you're worried. You love your child so much and you want them to be healthy, happy, and safe. At the same time, this worry is your own problem to manage, not your child's. You might need to hear yourself say out loud, I have this impulse to tell you what you should do and I'm really trying to hold back. It's my problem, not yours, and I'm working on it. It's not your responsibility as a parent to make your child change. And anyway, your child won't change until they're ready. And that may or may not be when or how you think they should. In these moments, it helps to embrace your role as a guide or an advisor rather than a director of your child's life. Instead of trying to force your kid to change by attacking, shaming, or endlessly advising them, help them see the inconsistencies between what they say is important to them and what they're actually doing. Draw out your child's own reasons for potentially making positive changes. Call attention to the nuances in their thinking, and they may become more open in their perspectives. Using these MI skills can help you guide your child toward their own intrinsic motivation to make the change they want for themselves. But know that you may not come to a place of resolution after just one conversation. Your child may need to process the conversation on their own time. The change you're hoping for may not happen immediately or right in front of you, but you've gotten the ball rolling and often that's enough for them to take it from there. If you listen well, have healthy boundaries with your kids and have compassion for them, this increases the conditions that facilitate change. They'll let you help them think through a problematic situation and you won't have to come up with all the ideas alone. And when you're able to get below the surface of whatever self-defeating or less than ideal behavior your child is engaging in, you'll find that most kids want what's best for them and that they know the best and most efficient way to achieve that because they are the expert in themselves. I hope that's helpful. You can learn more about my work with parents at www.brooklynparenttherapy.com and on Instagram at bkparents. That's B-K-P-A-R-E-N-T-S. If you have more questions about using MI skills with kids, or any other parenting questions or stories, leave me a message at 646-926-3243. And be sure to let me know if it's okay to use your voice on the show. Or send an email to parenthood at quickanddirtytips.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Project Parenthood on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Catch you next week. Project Parenthood is a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Dan Firebend with script editing by Adam Cecil. Our podcast and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our digital operations specialist is Holly Hutchings. Our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. And our intern is Cameron Lacey. 